Hello everyone, I'm Gabriel Riel and this is the Rise Atlantis Show. Hallelujah. Uh, the topic for the day will be about um, how um, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, President of Israel, announced today all this proof that Iran had been uh, doing and is still um, pursuing nuclear bombs. It was very interesting because um, I've never seen him present it, um, proof like this before. And it was really big. So I congratulate ben Benjamin Netanyahu on this. Um, he um, <clears throat> showed uh, thousands of, of uh, CDs uh, in, in a giant cabinet. Um, and on the other side, <laughs> it was like a, a huge screen where it would show all kinds of information showing all the proof so this had been really uh, a first to see Benjamin Netanyahu revealing a whole bunch of uh, proof so this was very big and um <clears throat> I, I believe war will be coming to Iran soon and the rest of the world basically. When I say war, I don't mean um, by going in and bombing and all that. I mean um, soldiers going in and taking out the main leaders of dictator governments. Not assassinating them, but capturing them and holding them for trial. Um, be found guilty. Now, I don't think they should be uh, death sentenced, maybe life in prison. So, um, the rulers of dictatorships, um, I believe, need to be brought to justice, need to be brought to court, and they need to bring new people in. Uh, so, this is what I'm predicting here. We're going to see, um, I hope at least, you know. I hope we see uh, reform happen and all dictators uh, pushed out of power, not assassinated, not even death penalty, if they've been uh, proven with severe um, cases of genocide and killing and all, then, I mean, maybe death penalty, but I like to lean more on the side of give them life in prison. So, that will be the topic of the day. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, revealing all this information, all this proof that Iran has been up to all this uh, terrorism for so long. They've been funding Hamas. They've been funding terrorist organizations. So I kind of agree with um, John McCain on that joke where he said, uh, like the Beach Boys song, Bomb Iran. The Beach Boys song, Bomb Iran. Bomb Iran. Uh, if you haven't heard of the, the joke he said, he said, uh, well, you know that song, Bob Iran? And he's uh, like, um, his version is, a bomb Iran, bomb Iran, bomb, bomb Iran, bomb Iran, bomb Iran, bomb, bomb Iran. And you know, if that's what it takes, <clears throat> then I think we may have to drop bombs on Iran. Um, we should really focus on enemy targets. Um, you know, I, I hope it doesn't have to come to using bombs. I hope we can send soldiers in and capture them. Um, you know, but if we have to use bombs, then that's what it may have to take. Um, so now we're going to get into the news. Warrior statue has been spotted on Mars. And people are saying, oh, it's just a, a lighting and this and that. I mean, I don't know. Could be. So, proof is in the pudding. The pictures speak for themselves. Now, it doesn't look exactly like a, a warrior face, but it does look interesting. Here is the picture right here. And you can clearly see the head, the ear, the neck, the eye. <coughs> the eye is right where the green dot is. <laughs> You know, that green dot is just a reflection of the... It's so hard to send in this. The green... Oh, why does it seem so hard? There we go. Okay. The green dot is a reflection of the camera light. 
for some reason, when I move the phone down, it brings like the picture up, and when I move the phone up, it brings the picture down. And I move it right, it moves left. When I move left, <clears throat> it moves right. So for some reason, the camera is distorted. It shows like everything reversed. Like the microphone here, for example, is on the right side. But it's showing on the camera like it's the left side. See, this is the left side, which is, uh, really, it looks the right side, but this is left. Oh, my God. Which in the Matrix, I guess because I'm seeing myself from the, the crowd looking in. So that's why it seems uh, so weird, man. I'm not used to this uh, uh, angling. That's why it's so tricky when I move up, it moves down. When I move down, it moves up. And then I'm moving, I'm moving right here and it's going left. I'm moving left and it's going right. So I wish it wasn't like that. That's why when I'm trying to like show certain um, uh, pictures, videos, it, it like always goes bonkers you know because I <clears throat> it's hard to adjust I'm still getting used to it because it's opposite up is down and down is up left is right and right is left what oh my god you know so it is truly complicated but we have to roll with the changes here you know so that is interesting I must say I mean I'm willing to believe it because of the pyramids on Mars and even other faces on Mars now we look closely here, we see something rather odd as well. Upon further zoom in, the chin of the face is also forming another face. You see it here? This is the other second face. There's two eyes and a mouth there. And the mouth is where the uh, green dot is. Now. Why would there be another face on the chin of the face? This is weird stuff. Look at you can even see that the, the the this face right here forms an ear. And the ear is the same ear that forms the the face itself. So this is weird. If this is a natural occurrence, if that's a natural occurrence, it's one heck of an occurrence. Um, if it was actually carved by extraterrestrials, why have a second face? What is the meaning of that? Could it be hybriding? I think so. Uh, it could be saying half human, half animal. Oh! Yo! Oh, man. <clears throat> this face right here is a human face, but this looks like some kind of dog chupacabra. So I'm thinking it's the animal, half half animal there, half human. It could be talking about hybriding. Yo, they could be talking about hybriding there. What? It's crazy stuff, right? If you look on the top, also, uh, it looks like some kind of a uh, uh, machete uh, on the helmet or some some kind of axe or something. Which right here, and then if you zoom in right here, some kind of axe-looking thing on the helmet. Now, how strange is that? I mean, for that to be an actual occurrence is one in a million. You know, when I first read the story of a warrior uh, face, I didn't really notice the axe-looking thing on the helmet. Now that makes me think it does look more warrior. That's how the people in the uh, medieval times used to wear on the helmets. You know, they used to have those little mohawk things. That's where people basically got the mohawk from. <clears throat> So it's very strange. Um, uh, not just medieval, a Mayan also. That uh, all kinds of uh, cultures and generations have been using that mohawk thing in the head. You know. Now, me personally, I don't think a mohawk is a good look. No offense to people that have mohawks, but the long ones, I mean, it's too too punk uh, for me. You know. I mean, I, I, if people wear a mohawk, I suggest definitely not bald on the sides here have some hair, not too thin, and then the, the mohawk very lightly, you know? Make it look more natural, don't overdo it, you know? I mean, of course you can add a color tips and all that, it'll make it look nice, but, I mean, where it's too mohawk, and too big, it looks ridiculous, you know? People get, can't get taken seriously like that, you know? <clears throat> but, you know, basic, um, nice looking, uh, small mo mohawks are very good, I don't mind that, that's a good look, you know? 
But I wouldn't want, I wouldn't have my kids wearing like mohawks so big, you know. Um, so it is crazy stuff. Man. You know, this was found by, man, this was found back in 2009. Why are we barely hearing about it? You see how it takes so long for people to get their, their message to the world? I mean, it's not their fault. I know how it is. I can relate. I've been trying to get my message uh, out there for so long. And it's never been happening, but now we're starting to gain ground with this new show I started, so. Man, the Rise of the Lattice Daily Show is picking up steam, man. Before you know it, it's going to be full throttle, man. And yes, we are rolling out the red carpet for Jesus' return. Hallelujah. <coughs> so that right there, yo. I didn't even notice that axe on the helmet, man. And I see a chupacabra on the chin. What? This is some crazy stuff, yo. Uh-huh. I think it's real. <coughs> see, there could have been a civilization on Mars back then. But they got too crazy with cloning and creating hybrids. Much the same as happening right now on this uh, horrible planet Earth. Um, but Jesus is returning to bring us out of this horrible realm. And bring us into... The majestic, you know, so. <clears throat> um, there could have been a, a advanced civilization on Mars back then, but uh, God destroyed them because they got too wicked, you know. So God maybe uh, allowed certain signs to exist on Mars. <clears throat> like these faces in the pyramids on Mars. Uh, as proof. Proof that God brought judgment on the wicked on Mars back then. <coughs> so they should make a movie about that. Civilization on Mars. And I remember there was a movie recently called... Um, oh man, I think it was a Disney movie. I completely forgot. It was Troy. Not Troy. It was something like that. Um, and it, it caught a lot of flack because they said uh, the name sounded cheesy. I mean, I wish they would have had more... Aliens and stuff. And I wish they would have made it better. I mean, uh, I, I can't really think of the name right now. Um, there was a movie. I can't even Google it because I don't know what to Google, you know, so. Oh, man. Tell me. It was John something. John something where he goes to another planet. Something like that. I could maybe do a search on that. I'm almost certain the first word is named John. It's not John Carpenter. I think it could be the word Carpenter. It might be John Carpenter. Let me see here. John Carpenter. Um, alien movie. I, I think this is it here. Let's see here. No, it's showing John Carpenter as a producer. <sighs> well, I'm showing him as a producer. Uh, it was something like that. John Carpenter or something. Oh, man. You know, and it, it makes me want to see it again. You know, to see how... See, John Carpenter is a producer, but... What was that movie where the... Uh, I, I think I got an idea, right? Put, uh, see, it, apparently it's not John Carpenter. Let's see, it might be a Disney movie, I don't know. I'm almost certain it was Disney. Disney alien movie. Guy goes to Mars. Uh, hopefully I might find it here. John Carter, that's it. I believe it came out in 2012. John Carter, yep. It's sad because they said Disney canceled plans for a sequel because supposedly it was catching flack that it wasn't that great. That's just from Wikipedia. I mean, I, mean, I don't like Wikipedia because anyone could change and alter um, information. So. I can't really trust Wikipedia, man. Um, but I'm not seeing anything else about it. That was canceled. Watch the book. Um, so the movie was John Carter. Let's see here. John Carter. John Carter movie. Canceled. Sequel. And 
Let's see if I can find a quick snippet on why it was cancelled. 2012 September, Stanton, the producer of that movie, announced that his next uh, directorial effort would be Pixar's Finding Dory, and that the plan to film a John Carter sequel went away and has been cancelled. Now they're not saying why it was cancelled. Uh, they're planning to do two sequels to it, even maybe a, a TV show about it. But they don't say why it canceled it. They said it did horrible box rating, you know. Um, um, they said the budget for it was $250 million to $306 million. Which is basically $263.7 million after tax credit. So they spent $263.7 million. $263 million. It only made $284 million. So you, t you think seven, eight. Do you think $20 million is a lot of money, right? But it didn't, uh, it wasn't enough to recoup their losses that they spent so much money on. Um, and not only that, to pay certain actors, um, I'm not even sure who acted, I'm gonna check right now. But, um, this is when they say a movie flops, and it's sad, because 20 million dollars is a lot of money, you know? But, yet they spent almost, um, 30 million dollars? I mean, they, 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 it only made 20 million dollars. 20 million dollars. It only made 20 million dollars. No, wait. Yeah, it only made twenty million dollars, but um, it cost uh, almost two hundred sixty-three million dollars. So I mean, yeah, they did recoup their losses. They still made with twenty million, but it wasn't enough to pay all the actors and everything of all. See, this is where you people say that it's a flop and all this and that. Now all that that's. Uh, the total bill comes out to sending movies in theaters and all that. It's expensive to put a movie in the silver screen, and it shouldn't be that way. So, and it's sad, you know, they said it didn't do good enough, you know. So let me see who acted in the John Carter movie. Well, the best place to find uh, actor information is imdb.com, which stands for Internet Movie Database, IMDb. Right here we'll get the actors. And then you scroll to where it says full cast and crew. Top build. Now this is weird. The person who played the main actor, John Carter, is Taylor Kitsch. We haven't heard of him, so that's not sad. Uh, let's see, there's William Defoe, he's probably the only name we've heard of. Let me see here. Um, Okay, let's see here. So, um, William Defoe is probably the only name that's that's. Uh, oh, Thomas Hayden Church. He's a somewhat big name. Um, and from what I'm almost certain that these two people are have been the main actors. William Defoe and Thomas Hayden Church. They should have had them as the main actor. You know. So, a lot of people have heard of their names. Um, so, it's sad that we didn't do too good. Uh, the plot of it was transported to a Barsoom. Uh, Barsoom's a planet. A Civil War vet discovers a barren planet seemingly inhabited by 12 foot tall barbarians. Finding himself prisoner of these creatures, he escapes only to encounter Wula. And a princess in desperate need of a savior. So, I mean, yeah, they made it look too uh, medieval. I mean, if he's going to a futuristic planet, why would it look medieval? I guess that's why it caught flat. They should have had it more. I mean, yeah, have elements of medieval, but have elements of futuristic as well. You know? so, I don't know. Um, Unusual eruptions at world's largest active geyser in Yellowstone. 
So, um, they're saying, um, Yellowstone, super volcano could erupt again, and unusual eruptions of largest active geyser. This could be a sign, maybe it could explode. And they say Yellowstone super volcano explodes, they say it could take out two to three states. And, um, Nevada's on the list, California may be on the list, this is like... You know, it would be a tragedy if it would if that were to happen. Can you imagine just lava magma flying out everywhere across different states, burning everyone? Oh my God, this is it could really be a serious thing. I hope God prevents that from happening. May God keep us safe, Amen. So we'll go ahead and um, race through these uh, news stories real quick. Why a robot can't jump yet? They said because the circuits involved when it lands back down will shake everything too much. Even if they make it lighter weight. So they're working out a way to where when it lands, like a cell phone when it falls, it won't jitter it too much and break the artificial intelligence. And all the gears involved in a robot. <coughs> okay, let's see here. Former president of Brazil talks about his UFO encounter on national television. Brazil, South America. Let's see here. Um, oh, let's see here. Um, So many words, oh my god, so many words. I'm making my head spin so many words. Let's see here. Um, one hour interview devoted to other topics. Let's see here. Um, he said in 1982, oh, a clip from 1982, showing him accompanied by his wife, described three of them had when they were riding a taxi cab um, in South America. They said um, the object was hovering over the sea. We're seeing a lot more of this of uh, UFOs over the oceans, over water, be even over ponds and lakes. Let's see here. Um, Now, me personally, it's been a long time since I've seen a UFO, an actual full-fledged apparition. And even uh, seeing Jesus and God in the clouds, it's been a while. <clears throat> Almost, I'd say, a year and a half. So I'm hoping the activity could come back. I hope the magic can come back. I hope God can bring back the magic, you know, so. Let's see here. So you're saying one was hovering over the ocean. Self-illuminating. Not too bright, but bright. Uh, they first said it was a helicopter. And it, it performed movements um, that no aircraft can make. Um, flying in um, zigzag formations. And moving at speeds. No aircraft can move. Said he was a skeptic before seeing it, but now he believes. And he says he don't care what people say. He knows what he saw. Okay, let's see here. Next story. Okay. Trump agreed with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu today. And he said... They're not sitting back idly. They're setting off missiles, Trump said, as he agreed with Israeli's Prime Minister assessment of Iran. So, you know, Iranian government is a problem and they must be dealt with. If we can't take them out um, militarily, we at least need to capture them and hold them for trial. CNN investigation, 103 Uber drivers Accused of assault or abuse. So these people are taking advantage of 
their clients when they're giving them rides and they try um, taking advantage of them so it is alarming next story is um, Uh, T-Mobile and Sprint deal could mean wireless prices uh, to become more affordable, so that's good. Uh, let's see here. Next story. Oh, sorry for the yawns, everyone. I'm just uh, always tired every night. Nursing schools are rejecting thousands of applicants in the middle of a nursing shortage. So they're saying that there's a nursing shortage, but yet people are trying to stop people from becoming nurses so much because it's going to be a flood of uh, too many nurses soon. So it's very strange. Uh, Trump said he plans to bring back term limits. On Congress members. <coughs> so that's good. Trump, um, that's good. Term, li term limits on politicians is good. I, I believe it was, uh, was it, uh, was it Bill Maher? It was, uh, I can't believe I forgot his name. Oh, what was his name? That comedian, man. Um, I hate it when I forget people's names. But he said that um, politicians are like um, <clears throat> dirty clothes. You gotta change them once in a while, you know. Um, and I forgot. It wasn't Bill Maher. It was um, man. He was old also. I forgot his name. I, I hate it when I forget. Okay, so next story. French Museum discovers more than half of its paintings are fake. More than half of its paintings. I could pull up his name real quick. That comedian. Just based on that quote. I mean, it's a lot of words to type. Yeah. Oh, I believe he said are like diapers. You gotta change it. No, it okay, so Mark Twain, he said uh, politicians are like diapers. They must be changed. Okay, but it was also a comedian who referenced that also. Um, it was a comedian not too long ago. I forgot his name. Oh, man. I completely forgot his name. If I put comedian, I'll probably find it. Uh, so Robin Williams said that also. Um, that wasn't the one I was thinking of. Oh, man. If I could put old comedian guy. Hopefully it could bring up the name here. Hey, I completely forget. It wasn't Ralphie May, that was a shock, right? He died from, uh, from uh, pneumonia of all things. What? They said it was uh, probably caused some drugs and here. Drinking even. Okay, I believe this it might be in here. No, I don't want to take up too much time. Because I want to get into the topic of the day in EDP. So, it's really trying to... George Carlin, that was... George Carlin. I can't believe... I can't remember certain names sometimes. But George Carlin, that was his name. <clears throat> I think he was atheist, I'm not sure, but... I believe atheists, and now a lot of Christians argue this, but I really believe God is a loving, compassionate, caring God. And even if people are atheists, they'll go to heaven. As long as they don't commit horrible crimes like unrepentant murder, 
and horrible stuff like that. Maybe even certain adultery, I don't know, adultery gets a little tricky. I mean, because it affects families, it affects children. Who suffer in divorces? It's the children that suffer, you know? So, um, <clears throat> gambling, you know, spending all your money, especially on drugs, cartel status, all that, you know, certain sins become certain crimes like that. Without repentance, may make people um, go to hell. So I don't believe uh, that. Um, <clears throat> or how should I say? It? I believe that um, atheists who live good lives go to heaven. Now a lot of Christians argue that, and they say, "Oh, it's a Jesus only way." They don't accept Jesus in their lives; they're going to hell. You see, that's where it, it just, um, we don't want to be arguing with uh, people here. You know, Jesus wanted us all to um, <clears throat> live in, in harmony, you know. Like, like what, what happens to all the Budapest, you know. Um, all stuff like that, you know. I mean, if um, they don't do serious crimes... Then I believe they had a, they have a shot at repentance, you know. So let's see here. Um, let me get to the rest of the stories. Yeah, I already said this one, right? I just want to say really quick again. French Museum discovers more than half of its paintings are all fake. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. <coughs> There's a way you can tell if a painting is fake. You get like some paint in it, and on the very sides, the very corners, you, you start rubbing. And if you see other colors and other stuff underneath the painting, then you know it's fake. Also, if they try to do like tracing and stuff like that, you know it's a fake also. The way you can tell tracing. It's very complicated. It's very hard to find. Vatican treasurer Cardinal Pell to face trial on, on historical abuse charges. Now he was another one that was involved in the scandal. And we're hearing more more people involved day by day <coughs> of priests involved in these scandals. And the last story. Brazilian breaks record for biggest wave surf. Now look how big this wave is. Here's the surfer right here in the middle. That is how big the wave is. You can see the point of reference of the person and the wave. Now that's real big. Waves are dangerous, so if you're a surfer, you gotta be careful. Don't ride too big waves because the higher it goes up, the more it's going to drag you back down under the water. Not only can you hit your head on rocks and stuff underneath, but you might not have time to swim back up to catch air again, and you could die. So it's very serious stuff. And it makes me wonder, people that play uh, with their lives, they tempt fate like that, like skydiving, and they die from that. <coughs> Would you go to hell? Maybe. Because you're playing with your life like it's like it's a game, you know? And God doesn't want us to be um, playing with our lives like that. So, I would definitely recommend not to be doing these horrible, horrible, dangerous sports. Now we'll go ahead and get into the topic of the day. Okay, so this is a very big topic today. Netanyahu, I congratulate you. God bless you, Netanyahu. Now, a lot of people talk bad about Netanyahu also, saying that, <coughs> <coughs> well, he's been bombing uh, innocent targets in Palestine, killing so many innocent women and children. 
I mean, it's it's hard to say, man. For all we know, it's the pilots and the jets that are maybe doing sloppy bombings. <coughs> so it doesn't mean that um, Putin, I mean, not Putin. Uh, I despise Putin. Um, doesn't mean Netanyahu is responsible for all of that, you know? So the blood is not uh, on Netanyahu's hands. It may be on Israeli uh, pilots that, that are... One, either bombing innocent targets on purpose just to um, cause havoc, or two, accidental, you know? <coughs> I wish bombings were perfect, but they're not. They go one molecule off and it hits this and that, you know? So, I mean, I wish they could be sending soldiers in everywhere, but more soldiers would be dying. So, you know, it, it's very bad, you know? Of course, they try to warn the people with tea leaves and all that, say... Uh, avoid this area, it's going to be bombed and this and that. But then that's when the terrorists know when to flee, so it's, it's a can of worms, you know. And it's, it's very confusing, man, to try to um, find the best way, you know, to uh, handle the situation. It's not easy, man. Uh, who was it that said war is hell? Uh, I believe it was that movie uh, Full Metal Jacket or something, and it's true. War is hell. It's the closest you can get to hell. And um, this world is kind of like hell. But not to sound doom and gloom. Not to sound like a... Not pessimistic isn't the word. Not to sound like a... A negative person. But it's true. This world is in bad shape. But the good news is... Is that... Uh, it's like breaking news. I got good news and bad news. The bad news is... Is this world is horrible. The good news is... Jesus is returning. So, you know, a lot of people talk bad about Netanyahu, but I like Netanyahu. Um, but I do kind of agree with this. He's been president for too long. They, shouldn't, they should have term limits and, you know, should have more people in. So, <clears throat> I do agree with that, that Israel needs to have uh, term limits for presidents. But then again, you know, Benjamin Netanyahu has been doing a lot of good, you know, so. I don't know, man, you know. Now with the president of China making himself ruler for life, it's a mess, you know. And we need forced four-year term limits on everyone. On all rulers and all politicians. That's why I, I congratulate Trump for trying to bring back the four-year term limits on politicians. Certain senators had been staying in power for too long. So um, even though Trump joked about this, hey, maybe we should uh, try that in America, have someone be a ruler for life. Even though he joked around about that, his words are matching his actions by him saying, hey, we need presidential term limits on politicians. So I congratulate you, Trump. That was very good what you said. I, I like how... You know, <clears throat> even though he had said that about someone should be voted for America for life as a joke, you know, I do um, congratulate you for bringing term limits back to politicians. So the words do match his actions. Not the words necessarily he said about um, joking around about voting for life, but the words of his recent ones said, hey, we need term limits. So, um... Trump may joke around about something one day, but if he keeps saying something of true realness, then that means that Trump is sincere, you know, so. Again, I'm not playing politics. I'm not um, endorsing Trump. I never say if I'm Democrat or Republican, you know. Um, I choose no political party, so all my viewers out there watching can know that, you know, so you, you won't, um, <clears throat> you won't see me differently, you know. You won't, you won't hate me. If I say I'm Democrat or if I say I'm Republican, that's why I never say, you know, and, um, <clears throat> you know, so I stay neutral on it all. I, I don't choose any political party. So this is very big, and I congratulate Netanyahu. Um, but the way these rulers are is they're basically a spokesperson. You know, it's, it's the other rest of the government handling everything. You know, um, Putin is just a spokesperson. It's it's the the main uh, focal uh, 
government of Israel that is making all the shots, you know, so. And then Yahoo's just a, a political figure. He's just a, <clears throat> a symbol, you know. Now, if they get to the point like the president of China or, say, um, Putin, for example, if they try to overstep their boundaries of power and start calling all the shots, we have a problem there, you know. So it, it's one thing it's okay for them to be a spokesperson. But if they start flexing all their muscles, then that's a completely other thing, entirely different, you know. So it is very concerning, you know. And uh, let's see here, what else does it say? They said uh, that Iran negotiated a deal to end its nuclear program in 2015. Now they started like in the 80s, 90s, man, you know. So they've always been at it. They said uh, half a ton of material has been in its possession. Proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that Iranian government lied big time. He said the evidence gathered by Israeli intelligence proves that the Iranian government are no good. No good at all. So they say here uh, uh, a plethora of uh, proof, including video clips, graphics, charts, photos, blueprints, everything, steps and everything, you know? Um, and for so long, all these... Um, people in the Iranian government have been lying, saying, oh no, we're not working to pursue nuclear weapons, when in, in fact they have, you know. And the project was called Project Ahmad, began in the early 90s, whose main goal was to design and, and, design and produce and test five nuclear bombs that could be delivered by intercontinental ballistic missiles. Now, remember that guy, um... A certain names I do remember, like this, uh, this uh, fool, what was his name? Uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Uh, for some reason, I remember his name by mock, because, you know, I, I love to mock him. So Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, you know, and he's also known as Madman Ahmadinejad, you know, Ahmadinejad, you know, <clears throat> that guy is completely off the rocker. A real wacko, man, a real wacko. And, you know, uh, he said uh, jokingly or seriously that Iran should be wiped off the, I mean, um, uh, Mahmoud, Ahmadine, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, president of Iran, back in, was it 2005, 2000, or was it 2002 to 2005, around there, he said that Israel should be wiped off the face of the earth. Now, that's nothing to joke around about, man. You know, not only was he rallying terrorists to attack Israel, they had been um, supporting Hamas terrorists in Syria and Middle East by giving them weapons, giving them money, giving them shelter, um, training them even, giving them bombs, you name it. They were handing them all the guns and bombs and they're just telling a terrorist, here you go, go out and kill everyone, you know. <clears throat> So all this time, the Iranian government has never been held uh, accountable. They've never been brought to justice. And so many people in so many countries have gone away with so many things, with so much blood on their hands. But the time is coming where we need to hold everyone accountable and bring this uh, divine justice in. Um, bring this wrath from the Lord. Uh, and we need to um, really bring down... The iron hammer here on terrorists, you know, and we need to just completely um, extinguish all terrorism, man. Extinguish it all, you know. So when he said uh, that terrorists should, I mean, when he said that Israel should be wiped out the face of the earth, we say to the terrorists, "This, you terrorists should be wiped out the face of the earth," you know, and that's how it's going to be when Jesus returns, man. All terrorists will be brought to the final land, man. There'll never be another 9-11 in heaven. Like, there'll never be another Hitler Holocaust. Like, there'll never be another Syria tragedy. Like, there'll never be another um, Iraq and uh, Saddam gassing his people, just like uh, President of Turkey and Syria, you know, and just like Gaddafi, you know. 
uh, time and time again, we always see that these uh, dictators, they keep killing their protesters because they're afraid to be replaced in power. So the ones they can't throw in prison because the protesters are violently attacking back, that's when these dictators say, okay, we have the right to go and kill the protesters now because they say they're being violently attacked. So that is the smokescreen. That's the excuse they use to kill um, protesters. <clears throat> you know? And I wish protesters didn't um, react violently. I wish they wouldn't violently protest because they're, they're giving um, fuel to the fire for these dictators to go and kill them, you know? So... Um, and even the even the peaceful ones get thrown into the mix. So even the peaceful protesters are being killed along with all the the bad protesters. You know, it's it's not good to uh, see Jesus and God. They don't want us to be putting gasoline in glass bottles uh, and throwing them at people like Molotov cocktails. You know, that's not what God wants. God wants us to protest peacefully. To, uh, to make change, you know. Uh, just because it's called a peaceful protest doesn't mean it doesn't have to be powerful. We can make powerful uh, movements and, and revolutions happen through peaceful protesting, you know. The very second we start violently protesting, it hurts our cause. It makes us look bad. It makes us look uh, like radical fundamentalists, you know. And... Um, <laughs> Violent protesters get labeled just as bad as terrorists, you know, because they're the ones you see on the news that are throwing Molotov cocktail bombs at everyone. They're the ones that you see that are throwing these um, these uh, Molotov cocktail bombs at all the soldiers and stuff, you know, and um, <clears throat> that's not how we want our image to look as protesters, you know. So, I mean, every time a protest happens, they need to find the bad people in protests and really subdue them. And, you know, kick them out of the group. You know, I hate to say it, but there's always going to be uh, bad people in every field of everything, you know. <clears throat> so, you know, I wish all protesting was peaceful, but there's always wackos that are involved, you know. So, they're the ones that try to ruin the party for us all, you know. <clears throat> and it's not right. You know, so this is really big news. Um, let's see here, what else? So Netanyahu, um, this, this, I'm very fascinated by this. Because all this time, I've never seen him, you know, show so much proof like this before. So, this was a very powerful day right here. This, was, this could be a game-changer day. Which means we might start to see um, reform happen in Iran. Where they'll go in and physically take the dictators from Iran and remove them, you know, and bring in fair voting elections, you know, to bring real reform in Iran. You know, there are people crying out so much for protests, for change and revolution in so many places in the world. And um, it should be our government along with the rest of the governments of the world, the UN and all, to step in and to really... Um, Remove dictators without killing them, without assassination. Send troops in and get them like we got Bin Laden. Oh, now, of course, we, we shot Bin Laden. But um, <clears throat> imagine if we would have captured Bin Laden and had him on, on court, you know, and had the world laugh at him. Uh, you know, it would have made terrorists um, more, more devastated. It would have been a more powerful blow to the terrorists. If we would have captured Bin Laden alive, you know, so um, just like when they captured Saddam Hussein, that was powerful. They took him to trial and everything, you know. That's how we should do with terrorists. Instead of doing the easy, quick way of going and shooting the terrorists and killing them, we need to capture them, bring all the proof, and um, give them their right to a, a fair court. And if they're found innocent, then they are innocent. But if they are guilty, then they, um, <clears throat> uh, either the death penalty or life in prison. I'm leaning more on the fence of giving everyone life in prison instead of death penalty. I'm not in favor of the death penalty. And you hear, uh, Trump, he's, um, reaffirming that he's going to give drug dealers death penalties. Now, I hope he's not calling for death penalties on small drug, uh, dealers, 
uh, only the serious ones, the cartel status. Those are the ones, the, the chapos of the world. Those are the ones that need to be put to death. But even then, I don't agree to death penalty. Life in prison? But look at uh, El Chapo. He's escaped prison, what, like five times? I'm surprised he's being kept in there this long. For all we know, he might crawl out of another tunnel tomorrow, you know? So, um, that guy Chapo, you know, he's <clears throat> clearly shows why life in prison could be a concern if uh, all these riots keep happening in the prisons and these prisoners keep slipping out, you know? Keep going on their vacations here and there, you know? So, life in prisons can be a concern if, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, how do you call it? If, uh, um, <clears throat> if riots keep happening in prisons and the criminals keep escaping the prisons. That's the only bad thing about life uh, in prison for people. But then again, I don't, I don't believe that everyone should be getting the electric chair either, you know. So there needs to be a fine line on how much is too much, you know. On how much is too much. Because, yeah, all these cartel status drug dealers, they're killing people with all these drugs. And they're making so much money. They're not doing good things with the money. They're not building churches and glorifying God. I mean, yeah, a lot of them do try changing their lives around. But they did it with blood money, you know. Uh, especially they hired people to kill people, you know. You can't be a Christian after that, you know. <laughs> it's like, um, th these cartel leaders, when they change their lives around, they, they don't, they don't, um, they don't do good things with their money when they're done being drug dealers, you know. I mean, they, they spend it on weapons and they give them to people to go assassinate people like the mafia and all. You know, and it's horrible, you know. And it's like the movie Scarface. They get rich with all that blood money, you know. And eventually it all just comes back down on them. It's a karma, you know. And um, <clears throat> that's why the drug scene is really bad. You know, you want to try to get rich in the drug scene, it's going to bite you back later on. Man. It never works out in the long term, you know. So we'll go ahead and end the topic of the day there and we'll go ahead and do the EVPs now. EVPs stand for Electronic Voice Phenomenon. Pick up the ghosts on the audio recorders and the cell phones. And here we go. Oh man. I'm so tired. I feel like I could run for president now, I'm talking out every night. Now, me personally, I would never run for president. Not just the ego involved, but uh, the fact that I, I don't like flying airplane. And to be president, they force you to fly on Air Force One. You can't say, oh, I want to take Greyhound everywhere. Or I want to take this, uh, this huge RV around everywhere. They don't let you. They say, no, Mr. President, you have to fly everywhere. And I'm afraid of heights. I'm afraid of airplanes. So I would never be president based on that. You know, unless they change the rules around. But even then, you know, politics is too much ego-based. And it's all this bickering and arguing. And, you know, the political scene is a horrible career. It's definitely not meant to be a career. In my opinion, it should be a hobby, you know. Um, it should be something people volunteer to do. Now people say, well, they need to be paid because um, they have to deal with uh, threats, death threats, and this and that. And You know, um, well, okay, if that's the case, then they shouldn't be paid so much money. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and get into the EVPs. And I always pray to God every time to let Christians know that this is not occultism. Amen. When you do it for God, there's nothing wrong. Let's see here. Um, now we'll go ahead and get it going. Okay. <sighs> and here we go.
Okay, this phone got the words. <clears throat> this phone got the words. This makes no sense at all. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Um, the journey is dangerous. Um, and who's that handsome? What does this mean? I don't know. Something about a dangerous journey and handsome. Are the ghosts calling me handsome? Uh, this is strange here. I don't know what to make of this here. Don't know what to make of that at all. And this phone got the words, that's a lot. Crupper. Narcotism. I was talking about cartels, drug dealers. Look. Crupper. Narcotism. Shotten. To maybe shorten or shot at. Shotten. Joist means like to hoist up, like joust maybe. Ripened, like fruit being ripe. Indicator, something alerting us to something. Saved. Wristed, could talk about suicide and slitting wrists. Washington, an end. So if I could put this into a sentence, something is being crup crupped up, like coupled, of uh, the drug dealers. And shortened of uh, <coughs> food becoming ripe as an indicator, like harvest could be talking about Jesus' return, and that we will be saved from this world. And the wristed, the evil people will be wristed and maybe handcuffed after the rapture. And Washington, maybe it's taking place in Washington, D.C., or Washington State. And then it says the word end, like the end of time. So something is talking about like the rapture, then everyone left behind after the rapture will go through the tribulation. Uh, that's what this one's saying here. Now we'll go ahead and do two more. <clears throat> what does this mean? I was carefully I was carefully present among blue flowers. No shadows. That's it flowers. I was carefully present among blue shadows. Uh, so shadows, you know, could be talking about shadow ghosts. Weird. Now, I've never seen a blue shadow ghost. I've always seen them like black shadow ghosts. So that is weird. Let's see here. This phone got the words. Three words. Plant, but with an E, like plante. Was that French? <laughs> is that French for plant? Plante. Uh, small and blessed. So about planting something small and blessed. I have no idea what that means. We will go ahead and do one more. I know when I say one more, it's two sets of one. So here we go. Here we go with the flow, yo. All right.
Okay, this phone says definitely what are together. <clears throat> They're saying definitely what a get together. Now, my family, man, my family members is arguing a bit, giving me some much drama. So it's weird, man. You know, in heaven, we'll be the family of God. We are the family of God right now. But in heaven, we will truly all be united in true harmony, man. And this last one has the words, Do, like something is due to come, D-U-E, then phosphine, some kind of chemical element, then fusion, okay, the fusion element, the, the, the phosphine being fusion together, Estonian, and then Lord. Now, Estonian's weird, because I remember there was a UFO in Estonia one time. I mean, I don't know. What does it mean? I don't know. So, something of a chemical being fusioned together in Estonia. Could this be a clue? They could be creating uh, human cloning and half human, half animal hybrids in Estonia? Could be. Going out on a limb here. But based on this EVP, it could be saying... That human cloning <clears throat> and hybrid, half-human, half-animal hybrid creations may be taking place in Estonia. Now, Estonia is somewhere by Russia, so that makes sense. Putin may be a Raelian. You know, he, he may be wanting to clone himself for the false sense of eternal life. I keep stressing that topic because it's a very important topic. Everyone needs to hear and know about what's going on with science. That these people want to clone themselves for a false sense of eternal life. And they want to start creating these half-human, half-animal hybrids for the world to worship them as gods. This is what Mark of the Beast Revelation is all about. Pieces of the puzzle are fitting in, man. And we see the big picture, amen. And we know what's happening. We know what's coming. So could it be happening in Estonia? That's what the EVP could be saying here. Pretty strange. So we'll go ahead and end it on there, on that note. Let's keep an eye on Estonia. Let's see if anything weird comes out of that area. It's by Russia, so Putin, you know, he's a little bit out there, a little bit wacko, man. You know, he's he's a, he's a hothead, you know. These people that are hotheads should not be in government. And uh, before I end it, I'll, uh, before I end the show, I just want to talk about these things I got real quick. I got a security camera, man. Check that out. Bam, I got two, one for the front and one for the backyard. So uh, it looks like a little flying saucer also, huh? You know, so um, definitely need these for the haters. And I got these, man. Yo, I wish they would have it with the replaceable thing, but for like 20 bucks, you can't beat it, man. Now, when you first see it, you think, oh, it's just a regular pair of headphones. But on closer examination by the brand... Coach Nietzsche. Coach Nietzsche. I'm not sure you can see it from here. From the brand Coach Nietzsche. Now check out these headphones, man. Look at the design. The white and red. It reminds me of that movie Robot Jocks. Where it's about um, people that are in giant uh, robot suits. And they fight each other, you know. And it has a lot of the, the robots. They have the same color like the white and red. So it reminds me of that movie. <clears throat> and check this out. When you plug it in, it's like the coolest thing ever. It's got two plugs. One for the microphone and one for the headphones. Now when you plug the USB in, check out what happens. Now I've noticed, I found out something. <laughs> <coughs> to know which side is the correct side when you plug in on a USB, there's always a dot in the middle on the bottom right here. You see that dot right there? It looks like a face. See, this one has two dots and no other dot on the bottom. But when you have it like this, this looks like a, like a, <clears throat> like two eyes, you know? But on this one, it has like a little mouth. 
It's uh, the dot in the middle on the two dots. This is how you know that this should always be the side facing up. That's how you know which is the correct way for a, a USB plug to plug in. And these headphones are a gaming headphone. Now what's so nice about it is, check this out, when you plug it in, where's the USB it's on this side? When you plug it in, check out what it does. Ah uh, yeah, it lights up. How cool is that, right? Now they had another one that was black and then blue. I mean, I like the blue, but the black color, I mean, it doesn't really stand out with your hair. It blends in. It doesn't pop, you know. It doesn't stand out. <coughs> but with this one, it does. You know, you see the outline and all. And um, the white goes good with the red. It's like perfect combination. Check this out. It has a microphone. Yeah, that's perfect for gaming. But not only that, I'm going to use this for DJing, performing my music. So um, this could uh, work as a microphone instead of having to hold the microphone. It'd be like this, you know. So wow, you know, these are really awesome. For only 20 bucks, man. Can't beat it. Can't beat it. And even the microphone lights up. Check that out. Even the microphone lights up. What? I got this also for my gaming channel that I'm going to start up soon. So I'm going to start up a gaming channel also. And this is perfect for it, you know. Wow, how cool is that? And look how big these are. You get good bass out of these and everything, man. Good acoustics and all. So I definitely recommend these, man. And for the price, $20, you can't beat it, man. You know, other other uh, headphones like these go for like $80, $100 on the internet. That's absurd. They shouldn't cost that much for a pair of headphones, you know. But light up headphones like that for only 20 bucks, man, that's a bargain if you ask me. So we'll go ahead and end it there. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please tell everyone you know to like, share, and subscribe. And thank you. God bless you all. And know that Jesus is returning. Hallelujah. And uh, <coughs> go outside in the daytime, nighttime, in the backyard and ask God for a sign. And I guarantee you, you will see signs, apparitions. And Jesus and God appearing in the clouds, illuminating in the clouds at night also. So powerful stuff is coming, man. Exciting times we are in. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Good night. Peace.